G'day, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another EV Quickie. This one we're going to look at a couple of net zero stories. Uh, you may recall uh, not that long ago uh, there was this terrible blackout in Spain that actually caused a lot of the grid to just collapse across Spain and also parts of France. And uh, the Telegraph is reporting uh, on an official report which, uh, which lays the blame partially at the amount of renewable energy, solar panels in particular, because they actually produced too much electricity uh, during the peak of the day. And there was not enough synchronous generation, that is rotating turbines and things like that, you know, traditional nuclear or fossil fuel generation uh, to keep the grid stable. And so it fell over. And as this article says, renewable energy triggered Spain's blackouts. Glut of solar power sent prices plunging, which triggered a mass switch off, official report says. Spain's disastrous national blackout was triggered by solar farms switching off in response to plummeting power prices, an official investigation has found. A government report into Europe's biggest power cut found that Spain's solar farms were generating so much power on April 28th, a particularly sunny day, that prices became negative, meaning there were no profits to be made in operating them. Plunging prices triggered a mass switch off, which sent voltage and frequency fluctuations cascading across the national grids of both Spain and Portugal. Backup systems meant to guard against such fluctuations were not in effect. This caused blackouts that left more than 60 million people across the Iberian Peninsula without power, the Spanish government report concluded. The power cut caused massive gridlock in cities and left thousands stranded on trains and in elevators across the Iberian Peninsula. Several deaths were also linked to the incident. Experts said in the immediate aftermath of the power cut that a reliance on net zero energy had left Spain and Portugal vulnerable to the blackouts because of the way renewable power is generated. However, Spain's left-wing government has repeatedly insisted that green energy was not to blame. Of course they would because they have to keep the net zero narrative going at all costs. Alberto Núñez Feijú, leader of the opposition People's Party, said ministers were so intent on being the greenest in the world that you have led Spaniards into the dark, the BBC reported. Well, at least in Spain, they have interconnectors uh, to France, which has a lot of nuclear uh, generation, which is synchronous and adds stability and inertia to the grid. In fact, the whole of Europe is one massive synchronous 50 hertz network, as I understand. Um, but in the UK, uh, which is going down a similar route with respect to uh, solar panels and other uh, non-synchronous generation, uh, it doesn't have the ability to connect synchronously to uh, the European network. Uh, there are DC interconnectors uh, between the UK and mainland Europe, uh, but they don't transfer inertia or stability um, because they are DC and not um, alternating current. And so in this other article, I'll link both of these uh, in the description. Go and read them for yourself. Really interesting. I'm a power engineer. The Iberian grid collapse makes me very afraid for Britain. We will soon lose most of our remaining grid inertia, increasing the risk of outages. Last Monday, the Iberian grid suffered a disturbance in the southwest at 12.33. In 3.5 seconds, this worsened and the interconnection to France disconnected. All renewable generation then went offline, followed by disconnection of all rotating generation plant. The Iberian blackout was complete within a few seconds. At the time, the grid was producing 28.4 gigawatts of power, of which 79% was solar and wind. This was a problematic situation, as solar and wind plants have another not widely known downside, one quite apart from their intermittency and expense. This is the fact that they do not supply any inertia to the grid. Thermal power plants, coal, gas, nuclear, for example, drive large spinning generators which are directly synchronously connected to the grid. If there are changes which cause a difference between demand and supply, the generators will start to spin faster or slower, but their inertia resists this process, meaning that the frequency of the alternating current in the grid changes only slowly. 
there is time for the grid managers to act, matching supply to demand and keeping the grid frequency within limits. Excellent primer here. Um, you should go and read this uh, because it explains why solar and wind are such a problem. This is vital because all grids must supply power at a steady frequency so that electrical appliances work properly and safely. Deviations from the standard grid frequency can cause damage to equipment and other problems. In practice, what happens quite rapidly when frequency changes significantly is that grid machinery trips out to prevent these issues and grids go down. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, he goes on to talk about the interconnects. Iberia is part of the continental Europe synchronous area, which stretches to 32 countries. It is interconnected as a phase locked 50 Hertz grid with a generation capacity of 700 gigawatts. To improve the stability of this grid, the EU aim is that all partners will extract 10% of their power consumption from synchronous interconnectors ones which transmit grid inertia, helping to make the whole system more resilient. France is at 10%, but peninsular grids and those at the geographical fringe are the least interconnected. Spain has just 2% from synchronous interconnectors. But there are places where things are worse. The UK and Ireland are island grids. They do have undersea power interconnectors to Europe, but these are non-synchronous DC links and transmit no grid inertia. There's little prospect that this will change. So it's even worse in the UK because they're um, an island and they're uh, basically disconnected from the grid inertia of Europe. Um, but it just goes to show um, a lot of other media outlets, um, especially those that are, um, are spruiking uh, net zero at all costs, uh, have reported this Spanish blackout as being nothing to do with renewables. Um, it, it's clearly not the case. There is clearly an effect. This would never have happened uh, if there wasn't a huge glut of solar power uh, in the middle of the day, uh, asynchronous solar power with no grid inertia. So anyway, go and read the articles at the links in the description, uh, both very interesting. And uh, yeah, that's it for this one. Thanks very much for watching. See you in the next one. Bye for now.